All right, we have a special deck profile for you guys today, and I, I'm going to tell you guys all this week we're going to have infinite information coming out. Uh, discussions are probably going to be tuned down or toned down a little bit as we are going to beat deck profiles down with a stick. As we are heading into Solomon Great format, the format has finally gotten its first run through of events now, um, and we have regional list coming out. So this is actually the third placed indie regional list. That's right. This bad boy got third place in the regional, and I'm really great. Or actually, I'm really happy to actually have this. Uh, Zeno Min actually ended up helping me get this information for you guys. But this is Clifton's third place list. Now, I've heard a lot of conspiracy around the community about people not wanting to play Pot of Extravaganza with the Incantation Engine, and I've also heard people not wanting to play Chalice Slime. Well, this takes the best of everything that everybody has been against and just slaps it underneath one roof. And that is exactly what I want to see in these decks. I want to see these bad theories being demolished. I've also heard people not like Valk for some reason. I've talked about that in previous videos. I, I don't know why people don't want to play Valk, but it's okay. And you know what? Let's take this one step further. Let's shove Zoborg the Mega Monarch in here just to make all of the naysayers even angrier about this. I think that this list takes the best of everything and encompasses it into, I, I guess, the best way to say it is you go first, you win, like, your resolve pot of extravaganza rip through your opponent's extra deck and then you do Necroz things. Like, this, this is about as good as it's going to get. Now, before I get into this, Clifton did give me a list of shoutouts. Um, he said he wanted to shout out Team TCS, shout out to Joshua Kuim, uh, Richard Waddle for letting him borrow all of the cards, and shout out to Chester, um, Henson, uh, Dominic God, I'm going to destroy his name. Uh, the Blessing, of course. Oh, man. And everyone else that was at the event. Uh, and I <laughs> so forth. So, I got to gotta say, <laughs> it's uh, always fantastic getting the chance to be. So, anyway, let's dig on into this. Why Necroz in this day and age? Well, anti-meta potential. Um, Unicorn is probably one of the best cards that you can have to floodgate the metagame. Um, also with Colossalus, and then as I said, like, as a going first engine potently, you are able to literally do whatever you want. Um, basically on a go first or go second mode. Um, if you are going first, you Zobborg the Mater Monarch. If you're going second, you know, Trishula loops and things like that are fantastic. So anyway... The build is playing one copy of Dance Princess of Necroz, and when we were talking about the Chicago deck profile, uh, the Young Duelist was talking about how actually playing Dance Princess was the best call that he made. So your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to the activation of Necroz Ritual spell cards, and Necroz Ritual monsters you control cannot be targeted by your opponent's card effects. None of that Widow Anchor shit. Alright, that's... Nobody wants to deal with that. And if this card is tributed by a card effect, you can target one of your banished Necroz monsters, except for Dance Princess, and add it back to your hand. The main thing you're playing this for is to make sure that your stuff fully resolves, and that your opponent is not slowing down your game state plan. Because to be honest with you, there's nothing more inconvenient than your opponent just going, oh, yeah, by the way, you can't play the game. You, you know what I mean? Now, as for the Incantation Engine, I... I, I I'm still perplexed by these quote-unquote ratios that people seem to pull out of nowhere that they want to play, but we are playing two copies of the bookstore. Basically, this entire lineup is going to tutor for everything that you could possibly actually ever want in the lineup. So, two copies of bookstore, two copies of candle, two copies of the pencil plume, and of course, triple copies of talismandra. No real actual problems with this engine. Now... This next part is going to be the part that I think people are going to question a little bit. And it is... Triple Manju is very standard. I think a lot of people have gone towards the mentality of not wanting to play Manju. It's a strange place, the things that I hear from the Necros community and I read. Um, he's also playing two copies of Man or Sunju, actually. Now, the thing with this is a lot of people will be like, Oh, well, you're taking up your normal summon. Like, why would you want to play this? Searching for a ritual monster or searching for, you know, Brionic for the discard is not a bad thing. All right, everybody, you guys have to understand that having additional normal summons, especially as like you're shuffling up through here. I mean, cool, we don't even have a core normal summon in our hand. Like, I, the only time it's going to really conflict, though, oh my god, that was a good hand. 
is literally the turn that you need to summon the Zaborg, the Mega Monarch. And if you don't open up the Zaborg, the Mega Monarch anyway, it's not going to matter. So, that's just something that I want to point out to you guys, is yes, you can play around the Zaborg play, but you have to make commitment for it. Um, and you're not always going to open it. I think it's kind of the problem that I think people have. It's like, oh, well, if I open the Zaborg, like, oh, that'd be my normal summon. Absolutely you do, but if you're going first or second, like, these are decisions that you have to make. Like, if you open up the Sunju, well, you know, and not the Zaborg, you're good to go, you know? Just my two cents on that. Uh, we have one copy of Ashurit. Uh, thank you, Shrit, for being probably the best card in this deck. We have Triple Zaborg, the Meggy Monarch himself. Uh, this is your win condition when going first. <laughs> um, one copy of Child Slime that just acts as the extender to kind of bring out whichever of these guys. Yeah, I know a lot of people, for whatever reason, don't like playing Child Slime in this deck. I think the one of copy is absolutely fine. Now, Necroz cards. So, Triple Necroz of Brionic. This is going to be your discard searcher. Um, AKA targeting two face up cards on the field and that are special for the next deck and bouncing them. I'm so glad that they gave this guy this dumb effect. But yeah, discard searcher in that. Uh, we have two copies of Colossus. Discard search for a Necroz spell and trap card. Or, you know, you can blink a monster with Splash so Summon from the extra deck, so you get to cover your bases there. One copy of Gungner, um, of course, um, during either player's turn, discard this card. Uh, Necros can't be destroyed by other card effects. And then uh, during either player's turn, discard one Necros card, destroy a target card. Honestly, probably... I, I, I don't know. She's... She's good. It's between her and Decisive Armor, I think, that people want to play. Uh, two copies of Trishula. Hee <laughs> hee. <laughs> fucking just removing cards is so great. I don't know how he gets away with having to target all three, but Trishula doesn't. Uh, one copy of Unicorn, probably the best card in the deck. And then, of course, triple copies of our boy Valk. Stopping those battle phases is absolutely crucial. Now, ritual spells. We are on a 2-2-2 two, two, two split. Um, I think that this is probably the number that you want to be at. I think playing any more than this, you're going to run into consistency issues. And you don't want to do that. Now, this is the big one here. Triple Pot of Extravaganza. Oh no, you don't play any other draw cards in this deck. I understand the logic of, oh no, you could potentially damage your extra deck when resolving a pot. I get it, it's fine, but those additional resources are going to put you further into the game, and you're not going to be in such a shitty place. It's not like you don't have Inces and Heralds to drop, you know what I mean? And I mean, you can additionally adjust start a cipher if you really need to, if you're really worried about it and playing extra copies of other stuff. And of course we have triple copies of Preparation of Rights. Searching is uh, absolutely great in this deck. Now the extra deck down here. This extra deck is pretty techy because of the way that he was playing the deck. So we have one copy of Phoenix, one copy of Yield, totally awesome. One copy of Cowboy for damage. We have one copy of Exiton Knight. This is going to be your balancer. I think a lot of people kind of forgot that this card actually exists. This card is pretty crazy, actually. I will give it up for my boy Exiton. The things that this card can do in the current game of Yu-Gi-Oh! are absolutely ridiculous. Um, we have one copy of Abyss Dweller, of course. One copy of Stardust Cypher, a Divine Dragon. This is going to be your level 12 dump. Um, starter, I believe that this is our level 11 or 10. I never remember his stars. Uh, one Omega for 8. And then, of course, we have Triple Herald of the Arc Light. One copy of Coral Dragon for 6. And then, of course, triple copies of Elder Entity Ints. Uh, I mean, you Kaleido out Unicorn here. You get a free destruction. I mean, fuck it. Take advantage of your stuff. Now, the side deck here is pretty interesting. We have triple copies of Gamma Seal. Um, I like Kaiju in my opponent's cards. This is actually very cute. We have triple copies of Book of Eclipse. Um, that Thunder Dragon matchup is absolutely shit for anybody. Now, this was interesting. They are act he actually took the chance and played Secret Village in the side deck. I'll be damned. I actually forgot that you can do cute spellcaster things with his deck. Hey, Gungnir's a spellcaster. Hey, spellcaster. Hey. Hey guys, the bookstore's a spellcaster. Hey guys, you have spellcasters in here. That's kind of cute. Then of course we have triple copies of Evenly Matched and triple copies of Red Reboot for those annoying trap matchups. Now, I, I do want to say I'm extremely happy to see Necroz actually 
do anything in this current format. So what do you guys think? Please, leave a comment down below, down there. Tell me what you guys think about this list, and well, guys, I'm out. Congratulations, sir. The ride never, well, truly ends. Thank you, patrons. Without you guys, I don't know what I'd be wearing in these videos. I might be a truffle shuffle instant all over again. Guys, please also check out Vancole 40 for some awesome banger content. Some other interesting stuff you might find up here on the left or in the description as well. Thanks for watching.